On today's Sound Iron Session, we're going to be breaking down a magical fantasy-inspired track, so stick around. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to another Sound Iron Session. My name is Craig Peters, and in this Sound Iron Session, we're going to be breaking down a track that I wrote that was inspired by scores like Mr. Magorum's Wonder Emporium from Alexander Desplat, Gamba from Benjamin Walfitch, which is a really fun score, as well as The Oz Great and Powerful by Danny Elfman. So a lot of these different scores, like certain things I took little bits from and was inspired by and just really wanted to capture that magical fantasy feel. So without further ado, let's dive in, check out the track, and then we'll start breaking down how I wrote it and some of the things that I did to get it to sound the way that it did. So let's check it out. All right, so that's the track. So let's go ahead and start breaking it down a little bit. So as you can see up top, I have this piano sketch. And what I did was I was just playing around with some chords and kind of fell around this sort of C major to G minor kind of chord progression. And this is all based off of F major. So you have these notes. And all I'm doing is just going from C to G minor. And you can see with this chord progression, they're sharing a common tone, which is this, this G right here. So it's just going from C major to G minor. And I just thought that had a really nice sound to it. And I, I really like those types of chord progressions where even if it's just two chords going back and forth and they share a common tone, you can even do this with F major. And it just has this really cool sound to it and felt like it sort of leaded into that kind of magical sort of feeling. And some of the first instruments that you hear on this track are woodwinds. So you got some flutes, some clarinets, some oboes, and some bassoons. And I just wanted it to have that magical feeling as if you woke up into this land and you're seeing all these different creatures and things you've never seen before and just really kind of having that whimsical feel. So let's go ahead and see the MIDI and check this out. And then you still have these bassoons playing up here. So that's sort of the way I wanted to kind of introduce the track, have a very lighthearted kind of slightly whimsical, magical kind of feeling with the woodwinds. And then I'm also using some glisses from Elysium Harp and these little gliss flourishes are really nice to just help 
add to that magical feel. So if I add these on top of the woodwinds, So you can hear by adding in these glisses, it really helps aid to that kind of magical feel. And towards the end, I use these glisses even more as the track builds up to this big kind of grandiose finish. And I also have some other harp as well. I have these harps just pretty much outlining the chords and just adding a little bit to it. And then if you hear this with everything else. And then some piano. Just playing that C major to G minor chord progression. have this melody that comes in. So here's the melody played on piano just by itself. Really simple. And then with the chords. So still going from C major to G minor, and then this melody just kind of playing throughout. And then around this section, it's mainly strings playing, and then we also have some brass just kind of outlining the root notes, doing some staccatos. So let's check out the brass. And then with the woodwinds as well. Now let's have a listen to just the strings so you can hear just what's going on with these instruments. So you can see we got harp, we also have some first violins and second violins, and I'm using these because we have these really nice trem staccatos and I really like how these sound because they have that little bit of tremolo in there but not like a full tremolo so it really adds to this kind of like these little short tremolo staccatos and they sound really nice and let's go ahead and check those out. So even though it's just first violins and second violins, it still has a nice, smaller, intimate sound because with this part, I don't want it to be very busy or have it sound like a big section. I really want it to have a more like smaller, intimate sound. And then we also have these violin phrases from Hyperion String solo violins. And these are really nice. And these are the C Sharp Light 70 BPM phrases. And what I did was I also pitched this down one semitone so that way it fits in within that C major kind of vibe. And these phrases, I really liked how they sounded in context of the track. So if we open this up, you can see all the different phrases and how I layered them. So let's check that out. And you can hear with these phrases, they really have a lot of life to them, really aid to the emotional feel of the track.
So with these phrases, I just combined different ones that I liked and tried to sculpt sort of this overall melody as if I had the solo violinist playing over the entire orchestra. And you can see with this phrase down here, even though it's shorter, I almost used it as like a rebo type sound. So if I play this phrase for the entire length that it was recorded, So you can hear there's even more to this phrase, but I just used just a little bit of it and then doubled it to give it that double rebo kind of sound before it goes into the next phrase. So if you hear this in context. And then it goes into the next one and then finishes out. So I really like that and it really helped give this track a lot of life. And with the violas, cellos, and basses, I'm just using them with the pizzicatos just to kind of aid to the rhythm and outline the chords and really let them just be more in the background. So this is just the pizzicatos by themselves. So you can hear it's really subtle and just in the background. And then most of the work is gonna be going on with the first violins and these phrases. And then about halfway while this is going on, I bring in some viola tremolos just to add that shimmery effect in the background. It sounds like this. And then with the tremolo stacks from the first and second violins, And then with the phrases. And then all together. And then around bar 21, we're doing a key change. We're going from F major to C minor. The only difference with this is that normally in C minor, you have G sharp major, G minor, and then F minor. But I'm going G sharp major, G minor, and then F major. It just kind of has that uplifting feel, even though it's descending in melody, it just sounds a little bit more, uh, more magical sounding and not so dark. And I really like that it's sort of kind of blending those two worlds together. And then at this part, we also have some choir. So let's go ahead and check that out. And this is going to be using our Venus Legato A, the Mars Legato A, as well as some Voices of Rapture. This is going to be using the soprano legato just to add a individual singer. I always like layering individual singers, especially if it's like female or male. With this, I really wanted it to have more of that kind of female dominant uh, choir sound, but the male's just kind of supporting it. And then I also have some Mercury Elements legato as well as some Venus Sustain A. Ah. So let's check out just the choir. So let's go ahead and check out the Venus Legato A and the Voices of Rapture Soprano Legato together. And then just the Voices of Rapture. And then together. And then here's with the men. So with this next section, it's really about the brass and just having that big brassy sound. I really wanted it to have this 
uplifting feel. And previously in this part, it was mainly just doing these little staccatos. So I really wanted the brass to step up on this next section and really just let the strings kind of outline the chords as well. So let's have a listen to just the brass. And then the woodwinds during this part are just mainly supporting the chords and I tried to interlink the different woodwind instruments to more blend with each other and really just be more of a supporting role and really just have that kind of woodwind chorale kind of sound. And you can see the little bits where I tried to let the woodwinds breathe just to try to simulate more of what it would sound like when woodwinds are playing. And for the woodwinds, I'm using the Symphony Series woodwinds that we did with Native Instruments. And then the strings during this part are just mainly supporting the chords, and I'm really just trying to let the brass be the more dominant sound as far as the chords go for this chord progression. You can hear I'm using those Elysium harp glisses, just little bits throughout, just to kind of add to that kind of sound. And then I also have the first and second violins outlining the melody. And then here's with the strings and the brass. And then you can hear midway through this sort of sort of grand finale part of the track. With the chords, I really liked this part where the melody is moving upwards, so it's really having that upward lifting feel, but the chords are just kind of going back and forth. So you have this. And then has that resolve. I really like that. So it's really nice when you can have a chord progression that just goes back and forth. I really wanted to keep the chord progression simple on this track and really let the melody shine. So it's always nice when you can have the melody ascend, but then the chords just kind of going back and forth. And then that resolve. And one of the things about these types of tracks that I love to use is choir because choir just automatically will make stuff feel super magical, especially with that big choir chorale in the background. So let's hear just the choir, the brass, and the strings. <laughs> And you can hear one of the things that I did with the horn is I really wanted to kind of poke out a little bit and do its own thing to have this sort of finale kind of sound. And you can hear it right here. So let's check that out. A little crescendo right there from the trombones and the bass trombones. And with this track, I could have ended it right there, but I wanted to give it a little bit of something special at the end. So I'm using this piano. And all I'm doing is just playing a little melody. And it's got that C Lydian vibe. Because Lydian is a great way of really capturing that 
magical sound because it just has that sort of with that sharp four because normally it would be but really has that nice kind of magical quality to it. And then right after this, I'm just echoing it with some clarinets. And that's it. So the next thing I want to talk about is a little bit of the mixing and how I got this to sound the way that it did. One of the main things I want to talk about is the reverb that I chose for this one. And I've been playing around with the Simplicity Berlin Studio reverb, and I really like how it sounds. So I'm going to bypass this and show you just how it sounds with the second violin phrases. So as you can hear, that's very dry. And with this, it's really nice because this reverb really allows you to place it in that sort of orchestral hall space. And you can see right here, you have these different little sections. So you got violins one, violins two, as well as violas, cello, and contrabasses. You have all these other sections as well. And you can see like for choir, I use this on my choir as well and place the choir back in the room. And then you also have some other little areas for like French horns, woodwinds, etc. So it's really nice to place these instruments in their selective spaces. So when I turn this reverb back on, it really sounds like it's back in the room and not as close. So you can see when I turn this off, it sounds way more like the player's right in front of me or recorded in a booth that's really dry. But then immediately when you turn it on, it pushes it back into the room. And I did this with all of the different strings as well. So if I go ahead and turn all the reverb off for these stringed instruments, let's go ahead and listen to the strings. Very dry. But if I start turning these on, you can hear it places it more back in the room. Off, and then back on. So I really like using this reverb. I think it really helps with placing the instruments in that room, especially if they're recorded dry. And then if you want to hear how the choir sounds without the reverb, let's check that out. So with these, there's a little bit of tail from where we recorded these choirs. And if I turn these off, and then if you want to see what this looks like. So as you can see, I place these in the choir section. So now let's have a listen. So you can hear by using this reverb on all the singers, even though they were recorded at different times, really helps make them feel like they're all in the same room and glue them together. So before we go ahead and wrap up this track, I want to talk to you about some of the plugins that I used to master this track. And what I did was I used the master assistant on this. Um, me and Nathan were talking about this on a recent podcast, and I never really experimented with using this on a track. So I just pretty much muted everything and just used the master assistant to give me some sort of what it thinks the track needed. So it gave me some EQ, gave me this kind of shape, the dynamics. It ended up turning it off. There's some dynamic EQ happening as well as the maximizer. I'm using the IRC2 and then I just have a negative 0.3 for the ceiling and then just around negative 1.8 for the threshold. So that's just for giving that overall level. And then one of my favorite bus compressors, I'm using the SSL G Comp and pretty much straightforward settings, nothing too special here. And then I'm also using this S1 Imager. I just wanted to play around with this just to give it a little bit of a wider sound 
And with this, I just loaded it up and just turned this up a little bit to where you can start to see it poking out of this field. If you go too far, you will start to introduce some different phasing. So you don't want that, but just a little bit, just to kind of add to that wide sound. And then I'm also using this virtual tape and this just helps give it that kind of warm tape sound and nothing too special here as well. Just I have uh, these settings right here. So if you ever want to copy these or experiment with them, uh, definitely feel free to do that. And then I also have some virtual mix bus from Slate and this is using the Brit Neve setting. And then I just have this turned up here. I also have the noise reduction turned off just to not have any more noise added to the signal. And then the first thing I have on my mix bus is this Goldfoss Master. And I'm using this first thing just to kind of have all the signal feed through it and just let it do its thing and clean up the signal. And you can play around with some different settings like the recover or tame, or you can also boost and brighten. So I didn't really do that too, too much, but mainly just using this first thing just to try to like clean up everything. And then they also have another version that you can use on groups as well. So if you have other instruments grouped to a bus and you want to use that version of Goldfoss on there and not the Goldfoss master, because this is only for doing any kind of uh, mastering on your mix bus. All right, so that about wraps up this Sound Iron session. If you like this video, please give it a like. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on future videos like these. And I want to thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Take care.